Westworld. The giant game of who's really a robot and why the man in black is a dick. Like many, I have a lot of theories that I want to dig deeper into, but before we can do that, we need to understand everything we can about the park, about the environment, the world itself, Westworld as an entity. So in this video, we'll be going over everything that we know to be true as of right now. Of course, the classic, oh, this was all just a dream, and the newcomers and hosts are all just hosts, and even the park management are hosts, and we're all assholes. That, that very well could still happen. But J.J. Abrams, you non-lost ending in a good way, produce an ass, please don't do that. So the first thing we know for certain is the structure of the park, right? We know that everybody starts in Sweetwater, and the further out you go, the crazier it gets, right? You pick an adventure, and it'll take you away from town, and you'll get robbed by bandits, right? But more than that, we actually have a map we can reference. So if you go to discoverwestworld.com, you can actually see uh, the layout of the park. We see that Sweetwater is here. Uh, Python Pass, which was referenced in Episode 3, uh, is all the way north up here. Abernathy Ranch, not too far away. The place where they had the shootout in Episode 2. And we can also see the desert down here, uh, as well as the sand dunes. Likely, this is around the area that uh, Ford and the little boy had the conversation with next to the steeple in the sand. The coolest thing about the map is that after each week's episode, they update it with what's actually in the show. Uh, so be sure to check that out. Moving on to our second point, we can pretty much isolate the limitations of the newcomers, right? So in the show, it states that the newcomers can't die. Well, at first it says they can't get hurt. I thought you said we couldn't get shot. You can't get killed. It wouldn't be much of a game if they can't shoot back. So looking deeper into this, we can actually find that the guns themselves act as a paintball. And the second that it hits, it either registers as a host or as a newcomer. If it's a, if it registers as a newcomer, it will act as a paintball and just bruise you. If you are a host, it will travel through you. Uh, don't ask me how. Science fiction. And that's their explanation as seen here. Under the Terms of Delos Destinations uh, 2B, it states, statistically speaking, you're more likely to die from a lightning strike than to die at a Delos park. However, and please note that what I'm reading means that you 100% can die at this park, right? So it goes, however, the following causes of accidental death have occurred within the Delos destinations. Notice the S there. Uh, buffalo stampede, self-cannibalism, accidental hanging, drowning, third degree burns, autoerotic asphyxiation, blunt force trauma, allergic reaction to non-native plant life, falling from a great distance, uh, falling from a great height, I mean, common manslaughter, and tumbleweeds. Did not notice the tumbleweeds before. Um, and essentially that you can't you can't sue, right? So in circumstance where a newcomer would be in danger, right? They also have a fail safe for this. Um, here in this line, it says, please note, the appearance of danger is not the same as true danger. So I think they added this, um, you know, if a host points a gun at you, you think you're in danger, but that's not true danger because there's fail safes against that. Um, but moving on, it says that all hosts utilize a good Samaritan trademarked reflex to prevent bodily harm. Uh, so essentially what I take from this is that if a host computationally thinks that you will die or get hurt, they will move to save you, right? Um, it says all hosts. So I assume that good, bad, evil, whatever plot line, eventually it will break the immersion to put your life in front of the story. The only thing stopping the host from hacking us to pieces is one line of your code. The last point I want to make is about the imagery used in the show. We know that they use a white hat, black hat method of telling good and evil paths apart, and we know that William chooses to go on the white hat path. However, the very first time we see him, it's actually the dark side of him in his reflection. In the same scene, we see a huge yin and yang vibe going on with his buddy who is bad encroaching into the good side. Later in the show, we then see William debating his hat selection and that he looks toward the dark side before he looks to the light. I think this gives us an insight into who William may become and overall represents the temptation that the park offers altogether. 
All right, guys, that's it for this video. In summary, we now know the layout of the park, the limitations of the newcomers, and the imagery behind pretty much every scene. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I put a bunch of work into it, and I can't wait to jump into the crazy fan theories going around the internet currently. Much love, everybody. And if any of this information was helpful, please be sure to share it with your friends. See you next time.